OnePlus 60 has just been launched and I've been reading the comments and the reactions, you know, they've been a little mixed. Well, some people love the minor changes that the 60 brings with it, some aren't happy with the pricing. It feels like the brand that started off as a flagship killer is now closer to being the flagship it wanted to kill. I mean, and it's not just the price either, it's the design choice, it's the marketing, it's all more flagshipy if that's a word. Uh, in the meantime, the 20 to 30k segment has gotten a new champion in the form of the Poco F1. So how does this Poco F1 stack up to the all new OnePlus 60? Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and we are about to find out in today's comparison video. If you do end up liking this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon. So let's start with the built-in design. With the 60, we see a continuation of the glass sandwich design language that OnePlus debuted with the OnePlus 6. What's changed is that we now get the latest Corning Gorilla Glass 6, which is a step up from Gorilla Glass 5 on the OnePlus 6. Glass may be fragile, but it does look beautiful and puts OnePlus's design on par with mainstream flagships. The Poco F1, on the other hand, has a plastic body, a Kevlar Black variant is available, but even with that, the Poco F1 doesn't look or feel as good as the OnePlus 6T. The OnePlus 6T might be a tad slimmer, but they both weigh about the same. Additionally, OnePlus also has day-to-day -day water resistance and the alert slider going for it. So it's going to be advantage OnePlus here. Now, I'm sure some of us, you know, feel the back's going to be covered up anyway. Glass is slippery and all that. And if you are one of those people who feel that way, then feel free to take this as a win for the Poco F1, but the vast majority, as evident by industry trends, do feel that glass bills are superior. Now, on the display front, there is no such confusion. Both phones have notches, yes, but the water drop notch on the OnePlus 60 looks far better than the wide notch we have on the Poco F1. That combined with the inky blacks of the AMOLED screen on the OnePlus 60 means that after a while, you forget that the notch even exists. The 60 has a slightly larger display as well at 6.41 inches. So all these factors combined leads to a much more immersive full screen experience on the OnePlus 60. Even though both panels might have the same full HD plus resolution, AMOLED gets an edge here for the better blacks and punchier colors. So it's the OnePlus 60 all the way here when it comes to the display. It is also worth mentioning that the 60 gets Gorilla Glass 6 while the Poco F1 has to make do with Gorilla Glass 3. And don't worry, I haven't yet forgotten about that other feature we will get to it in a bit now underneath the hood here's where the poco f1 gets a win it's not because it has the superior chip or anything not at all both phones come with the same snapdragon 845 chip poco does offer liquid cooling that is not even it it's the fact that the poco f1 has support for micro sd something oneplus doesn't if you are someone who shoots a lot of 4k or holds videos you might run out of storage on the oneplus 60 granted OnePlus has doubled the storage, so it's still 128 gigs, so you're not gonna run out real easy. But it's just the ease of use of micro SD combined with a lower cost, you know. Guys, a 128 gig card costs as little as 2000 rupees on Amazon these days. So all that kind of sways this round towards the Poco F1. Now, Poco manages to squeeze in another win on the battery front too. The F1 sports a 4000 mAh battery compared to the bigger 3700, bigger by comparison to the OnePlus 6, by the way, not to the F1, the 3700 mAh battery on the OnePlus 60. It's not just the 8%-ish advantage in capacity, the software too plays a major role here. MIUI has known to be pretty power efficient, heck, sometimes it's way too aggressive with memory management just to save battery, and that works out in its favor here. As from our initial testing, it seems like the Poco F1 does edge out the OnePlus 60, giving you around 10% better battery life on average. Of course, OnePlus has dash charge, so that and a lower capacity battery means the 60 can be charged faster. I mean, the Poco F1 does have support for Quick Charge 3, which might not be as fast, but it is still quite fast. And I'm gonna have to go with the Poco F1 for this round. Now, remember how software helped Poco win the last round? Well, software is gonna cost the F1 this round. Usually when it's MIUI versus Oxygen OS or any two brand specific interfaces, I've left it to the end consumer's preference. Some of us love MIUI, some of us love Oxygen OS. At the end of the day, it's a toss up between, you know, speed versus customization. However, the fact that we have the new Oxygen OS 9.0.3 running on the 60 that is based on Android 9 Pie means that OnePlus has a definite advantage here. On the bright side, software on the Poco phone is also getting better. And while it's still MIUI 9 as of 
you know, shooting this video, rumors indicate that stable MIUI 10 should be just around the corner. Even some beta tests have been running and hopefully that brings with it some of the much needed bug fixes along with extra features like white wine certification and everything. All that said, MIUI might also bring something else with it. It's been having an ad problem. Uh, it's not it's not on the Poco F1 yet, but Xiaomi's intense monetization of MIUI means the cleanliness of Oxygen OS looks all the more alluring. I mean, you can go back and watch my OnePlus versus Xiaomi videos, whether it was the OnePlus One with Cyanogen versus the Mi 3, Mi 4 with MIUI or a Mi Mix 2 versus OnePlus 5. I've always left software to user choice, but here the ad issue that Xiaomi has created by themselves means I'm leaning more towards OnePlus and Oxygen OS here. Now, before we jump to cameras, Let's talk sundries, the miscellaneous stuff. We've already seen that Poco F1 has microSD and the OnePlus 60 has day-to-day -day water resistance and the alert slider, so I'm not gonna take them into account again here. Uh, and there's not a lot of difference in cell reception or call quality. The Poco F1 does offer carrier aggregation though, uh, where the Poco F1 does score a major win is with the fact that it has a headphone jack. The 60 simply doesn't have one and that in my books is a major disappointment. Now coming to biometrics though, the 60 hits right back. The Poco F1 does have a IR assist for scanning your face via the front camera, so it's a little more accurate, especially under low light. But the 60's ace up its sleeve, well, more like under the display, is its in-display fingerprint scanner. It looks cool, works well, and isn't that much slower than the rear-mounted scanner on the Poco F1. Now on paper, audio should be an area where the f1 wins clean headphone jack check dual stereo speakers check but it seems like they have messed up on the last bed in reality the earpiece on the f1 sounds so low that it's negligible i mean see if you can tell the difference all right it's playing i'm covering up the lower part okay now you're predominantly hearing it from the top and i'm going to cover the top That's the whole audio. That's just the top. And the speaker output at high levels tends to get a little distorted. Technically, they could fix it by capping the maximum output to 90%, but they haven't done it yet. And I'm not gonna hold my breath on that one. Uh, so both phones seem tied for sundry, so I'm gonna call that a draw. Uh, and now let's move on to cameras. We have dual cameras to the back of both phones. The Poco F1 gets a primary 12 megapixel sensor with an f1.9 lens. The secondary sensor is a 5 megapixel depth sensor. With the OnePlus 60, we have a primary 16 megapixel sensor with an f1.7 lens and OIS. The secondary sensor is 20 megapixels again with the f1.7 lens. Under good light, both phones performed well. The OnePlus 60 had marginally better detail and better colors. The F1 was very close, even with dynamic range, which is where cheaper phones usually lose out. The F1 performed wonderfully. The real test though, well, it was under low light. Theoretical advantage for the Poco F1 because it has the larger pixel size, 1.4 microns compared to 1.22 on the OnePlus 60. But the 60's second sensor does kick in along with the wider aperture. On top of all of this, OIS on the 60 means that the shutter speed goes much lower than what it does with the F1. So as you can see here, the 60 performs remarkably better. Switch on Nightscape, that's what OnePlus is calling their night mode, and the result kind of blows the Poco F1 completely out of the water. With video, the OnePlus 60 has a crop, but that's because it has EIS even at 4K 60, which is absolutely nuts. Even phones like the Pixel 3 XL don't have 4K 60. The Mate 20 Pro does not have 4K 60, but the OnePlus 60 gets 4K 60 with EIS. Poco doesn't have EIS at 4K and can only do 30 FPS. So stability, detail, it's all OnePlus 60. It also has another trick up its sleeve in the form of super slow-mo 480 FPS at 720p, which the Poco F1 lacks. As for selfies, both phones sport high resolution cameras. Both phones have a 20 megapixel F2 camera. The colors are better on the F1, but the 60 overall has better looking images with more detail. And then we get to pricing, and this is one area where the Poco F1 absolutely dominates. 21K base variant compared to 38K base variant, 17,000 difference. And right now, the Poco F1 is on sale. It's gotten even higher price cuts, leading to a lot more difference. 
they're doing the whole hashtag do the math thing now anyway even with the top variant the regular pricing kevlar is 29k compared to 8256 60 coming in at 46 again a 17k difference at the least uh or another way you can look at it is you can get a kevlar poco with 8256 for 9000 rupees rupees lesser than a 6128 one plus 60. so what's better if value for money is what you seek the poco f1 is unrivaled today especially with all the offers it continues to be the best bang for your buck phone that money can buy and it also comes with a headphone jack but if you want a little more stockish android assured updates and assured no ads an in-display fingerprint sensor a superior camera experience especially under low light and for video all with a much more premium looking build i mean that tiny water drop notch is nearly invisible at times then the oneplus 60 would be right for you so if it's best value you seek go with the poco f1 for all else the 60 is the better phone i mean it is still decent value for money just not the best value for money anymore so there you go my two cents on this topic what do you think what's the better phone for you what's your opinion let me know in the comments below and with that it is time i bid you adieu thumbs up thumbs down based on what you felt about this video subscribe and turn on notifications by clicking that bell icon if you haven't yet make sure you don't miss out on any of our content till next time my name's ash you've been watching c4 retech and i'm signing off for now you guys have a great day bye bye